Your University of St. Francis football team rattled off 48 straight points in the first half en route to the 64-25 win at Lindenwood Belleville University. Cougar linebacker Eric Dunton blocked three kicks, which is unheard of. Two were punts, one of those Malachi Mannion returned back for a touchdown, and one was an extra point. There was a lot of noise surrounding the maroon and gray surface, but overall, the Cougs got better. Well, you, you know, I think our, our quarterback play was good. I thought we uh, had some big plays in the perimeter. I thought our, our PJ and, and uh, Martell and Tony did a good job running the football. Um, you know, we, we set the tone early. I uh, had planned on substituting uh, at quarterback early in the game. We did that in the first quarter. Uh, wanted to see Clay in earlier in the game. Uh, when things were uh, still on the line, and uh, I, I thought he performed very well in the first half. Um, second half, you know, we, uh, I've always had a rule, we always start second half of the game 0-0, zero, zero. you know, you go out and, and because of our injury situation and some of the extracurriculars, we were uh, fearful of what might happen, so we did not do that. And uh, third quarter, we kind of came out flat, and uh, we regained ourselves and uh, got our mojo back and went on for a route. But uh, played everybody I think we took and uh, escaped. You know, it, it's unfortunate. College football is a tool for young people to learn of the right things to do to be successful. And I, I really get depressed when, when I see young people that don't handle things well. And it was a, a, an environment there, and I, I feel sorry for those folks. They got their work cut out for them over there, uh, of negativity and not being able to handle uh, life very well. And um, I, I hope they can find a way to to be able to push the right buttons to do that. It's not in my control, just an observation. Uh, being in this, uh, this is my life of college football, so many years, it's important for me to see the development of young people, our program, all programs of being able to do the right things. That to me is more important than winning championships and all that good stuff. That's the truth. The development of Wilmer Cole has led to a program record, three interception returns for a touchdown in a season. And Dan Rixey became the first ever Coug to return a punt for a touchdown in back-to-back -back games against the winless Lynx. Yeah, kudos to, to Wilmer. What a great accomplishment and to Danny. Um, and you, you say a lesser opponent, uh, they're, they're a very talented group. They should be a lot better. They have some athletes. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, for Danny. Two weeks in a row, punt returns for touchdowns. He's got a little magic to him. And Wilmer, pick six. Man, you know, some guys never go through a, go for a whole career and never do that. And uh, so he, he set a record and so happy for him. And, you know, our guys uh, are coming together. I think we're starting to heal up a little bit. I hear uh, Pearson's doing better and Jay Green's doing better. So hopefully we can get them out there at full speed here soon. And this is the right time of the season to get back to full speed. Cougar QB Matt Crable leads the team averaging 222 yards of total offense per game. In Belleville, his limited first half play was superb. It started with two touchdown passes, then this beautiful 35-yard run for a touchdown. Running ball is something that uh, I didn't get a chance to do a whole lot in high school, and uh, it was something I really like to do. I feel like it, it's something that gets me in a rhythm. But you know, uh, it, it was a power play. Uh, took it right up the middle. There was, there was no one there. It was almost like a draw. They dropped out, and uh, John led up for me. He was on a safety, and uh, he, he took it up, I, I cut it back, and there was no one left. And luckily, I'm, uh, I'm not too slow, and safety didn't catch me completely, but 
Uh, you know, he gave me, a, gave me a run for my money and I had to dive for the pylon, but it was fun. We knew we wanted to uh, get off to a hot start. We knew we were a better team than them and uh, we didn't want to give them a chance to hang around. So we wanted to come out, we wanted to start off strong and uh, that's exactly what we did. We came out, we executed well and, uh, and we put some points on the board, so it was fun. Matt's a great young man and he's a great athlete. Um, he's making plays. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that can extend plays with his feet. Uh, we have to design some things uh, to allow that to happen, which we have done. You know, as, as coaches, you're never going to be pleased if it's not perfect, but it, it is very good. And, and uh, he is playing well, and I think uh, the leadership, uh, you know, is, is gaining momentum each and every game. So. Just got to keep on keeping on. The keeping on was brought to a standstill when Crable first arrived at Grand Valley State University after graduating from Cincinnati Moeller High School. The six foot four inch, 230 pound quarterback was double redshirted and only played one snap a year ago for the Lakers. So when he arrived on campus at USF, there was, in a sense, a learning curve. I absolutely had to knock off some rust. You know, it, it had been almost four years since I had played a significant amount of snaps on a football field. So uh, it was something that was, uh, it was a tough transition. You know, it was, I hadn't, even in practice at Grand Valley, I wasn't taking a ton of reps. And so um, to be able to come out, come here, get the reps I needed. You know, I took a lot of reps in the spring and took a lot of reps in fall camp. And to be able to, I, I absolutely needed to knock off some rust. and. Uh, Coming into that first game, Robert Morris being able to do what we did that game was a huge relief for me. Huge, huge weight was lifted off my shoulders, and you know that was that's where it all started. And I I really realized, gosh, this is this is fun. And it's supposed to be fun, but for Matt, whose father was a two-time All-American linebacker at Notre Dame and a first-round draft pick by the New York Jets, where he played for seven seasons. Sometimes the fun turned to stress, being the son of a Cincinnati Moeller legend. You know, it's been a little both my whole life. You know, having him as my dad to coach me a lot has been really helpful. You know, I mean, he knows the, he knows the game of football very well, being able being around it so long. On the flip side of it, having someone who, you know, I, I was living in a shadow a little bit, and it's something I kind of struggled with in high school. You know, I, I remember going to him one day and saying uh, that outcome is every time I'm in the newspaper, every time an article is written, they always have in parentheses, Mac, they have Matt Crable and in parentheses they have the son of former NFL linebacker Bob Crable. You know, it's something that, it, it used to bother me. It was something that I, I wanted to create my own legacy. I wanted to be my own person. And, uh, but as I got older, as I got uh, wiser, you know, it, it was something that I, I learned to not necessarily live with, but to be proud of, you know, he had, he has had some amazing accomplishments and being, having him as my father is something that I'm super proud of and something that I don't want to hide. It's, it, it's been something that's been really, really helpful throughout my life. And while I might be living in the shadow, I don't know, but, um, I'm okay with that. You know, it's because I, I am proud to be his son. And Matt's father is proud to see his son back on the field competing. He's happy. He's happy to see me playing again. You know, he he loves just being around the game. You know, being able to just watch me, watch what teams do. You know, he and not only our team but other teams. He he loves to see how they scheme us up and see things that we can do. And it's something that. Being around the game so long, it's hard to be a dad in the stands. But uh, you know, that's something he dealt with in high school, and it's something he's doing now. But he just he loves watching football, and he he loves the chance to be able to see me play. So now, after almost a full regular season under his belt, after replacing the NAIA Player of the Year and Nick Ferrer, Matt remains very optimistic as the starting QB for the back-to-back -back Natty Champs, and eager to get better. Yeah, you know, it's it's gone, it's gone. You know, it's uh, it's something that's been a it's been a hard battle. You know, we, we started off those first three weeks, we were clicking, we were we were clicking on all cylinders. St. Ambrose especially, we were we were pretty dominant. And then uh, you know, we hit a little bit of a rut there. Uh, St. X, we struggled a little bit offensively, 
And then throughout the next couple weeks, you know, we hit that gauntlet and um, faced a lot of tough defenses. And it's something that we really had to fight through, really had to battle through. And, uh, but we came out the other side, at, at least giving ourselves a chance here. You know, we, the offenses started to get back our rhythm the last couple weeks. And, you know, I feel really good. You know, even the, the two games we lost offensively, we really, we did not play well at all. And we still were in position to win those games. So knowing how good our defense is and how good our offense is, how talented we are, if we can put things together, we're gonna make a run at this. That gauntlet, we never got down on ourselves. Even when we were at our worst, we were still rounding around each other and we were, we were still fighting, scratching, clawing to get better. And um, it showed the last couple weeks with how well we played offensively. And I think that's a big, big reason why is we've been able to rally around each other and been able to work together and knowing how talented we are, uh, being able to do what we've done. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty talented, obviously, with, with how young we are and how many guys we got coming back next year and everything. And we're, we have a lot of work to do still, but we're on our way. USF is in a good place right now. If the Cougs handle their business at Taylor this weekend, yeah, this Taylor University, which Coach D expects they will, then there is a very good chance the Cougars will host a first round playoff game with number five Grandview hosting number eight Benedictine this weekend. Yeah, well, somebody's gonna lose between Benedictine and Grandview. So we will be up uh, into the top eight at least. And you never know what else is going to happen. There's another week after that, which, you know, we're off. Uh, another opportunity to, to heal a bit. So, you know, um, right now uh, our focus has got to be on Taylor University. I have a great deal of respect for them. Coach Korfmacher and the staff can do a great job coaching. Um, and and the, you can count on one thing. They're going to play 100%. They're going to give you maximum effort. They're going to play hard. Uh, they play better at home, and it's senior day. So I think we've got to be expecting uh, a, a real dogfight. So we've got to get ready to go. We've got to have a good week of preparation and be ready to be at our best on Saturday. We're in the position where we started the playoffs about a month early. You know, after Concordia, we couldn't afford another loss. And so every, that's our, been our mentality after Concordia is the next week's the most important game. So that, that's how we're gonna treat this week too. Next game is the, next, the most important game. So this is basically another playoff game for us. You know, being, being uh, on the road again, you know, even though it's only 45 minutes away, it's gonna be a tough environment. And um, we've gotta go in there and we gotta take care of business.